Hey guys, so in this video I'm gonna be showing you how to make one of these. It's a adult pike pattern and uh, I'm gonna be showing you step by step how to make one. So stay tuned. Alright, uh, the first step I usually always do is uh, lay down a base coat and for this particular lure I've uh, chosen black. But, of course, for a pike pattern, I think something like um, olive green might look pretty damn good, and even brown, I guess, might, might look good. And, of course, uh, color combos, like what you would have uh, something darker on the, on the up upper part, and uh, something lighter on the bottom. But, at least, since I'm uh, sort of like trying to do a northern European looking pike and they tend to be very dark in color I've chosen this black for this one and you guys might be wondering about the electric tape I usually always uh, have this electric tape uh, covering the gill plate since this is a carved pattern so just to you know not let the paint go, go over the gills. Right, I'm gonna start doing the scales now and uh, just using a normal scale netting that you can get from pretty much any fishing shop, shop that has uh, lure making stuff. I guess most of them has the, have this or at least something very similar. And uh, I'm holding it with uh, curtain nips uh, also featured from my previous videos, very handy little things. And just using gold for this one, since I'm making a older looking uh, adult pike, and they tend to have this golden shimmer on them, at least over here in Northern Europe. I guess uh, you could use um, silver as well. Uh, some pike in the Baltic Sea have this um, silver shimmer on them and of course uh, the musky also have uh, sort of like a silvery shimmer on them as well I have to say that this uh, golden paint that I use it's very pain in the ass to get sometimes through the brush like you can see I guess it has a lot of gold flakes in it um, and that's always clogging up my airbrush which is very annoying indeed Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, next I'm gonna start um, doing a little bit of preparation for the next stage, and uh, I'm doing that with uh, adding a little bit of white, you know, just to highlight um, specific areas that I'm gonna be actually painting on later on. And of course, when you do it like this, um, it makes uh, the colors have this cool shifting effect and you know just adds a um, little bit of hint of uh, realism to it um, when you actually start painting it later on I mostly do this with So now I'm going to start um, highlighting different areas on the head and I'm doing it with um, olive green and unfortunately uh, the line of paints that I use 
doesn't have olive green on them. So I just have to mix that myself. And basically what I do is I just uh, take the normal green that it has and mix that with uh, brown. And of course if you want to make it a little bit more darker, um, I just add a little bit of uh, black on it. Let me adjust the trigger a little bit here before I start uh, painting the mouth details, which are always uh, the parts that uh, you can mess up quite easily. So I just start uh, adding it very carefully and not putting too much of the paint on. I'm gonna start doing the back parts now. Looks pretty good already. I think uh, I'm done with this. A little bit more, I think. So now I'm gonna start putting a little bit more details on the on the head of the pike, and I'm just basically adding a little bit of um, black black on it. And I've actually diluted this. Um, pretty thin so it doesn't um, cover that well which is um, the whole idea of shading the uh, parts that I want to be uh, a little bit more darker Let's add a little bit on the back as well. And you have to be kind of careful not to spray too much of it since you're just highlighting different areas on it. You don't want, to, want it to stand out too much and have like sharp edges and stuff of that nature. Alright, let's get spotted here. So basically what I do is just um, Paint through the holes on the stencil, and that's the way I get the um, spot pattern on the on the pike. I mean, I could do this uh, free-handed, of course, but that takes time, time, and there's a potential that you might actually screw things up more easily. So, and this is much more faster to do anyway. So, 
that's the reason for that. And this is just normal copy paper like before. Uh, I didn't feel like making it uh, from any kind of plastic or anything like that. Since I'm probably gonna do um, just one of these pikes and uh, usually it doesn't really um, hold up that long in any way. So this is what it should look like. Right, we're at the final stage of our pike and we're gonna start laying down some yellow pretty much all over the bait. Except the belly of course. And you guys might be wondering why I didn't do this already before when I was doing the spots. And uh, the reason for that is that, at least in my personal opinion, it makes the colors blend in a little bit more nicer and makes things look a little bit more realistic, which is uh, definitely what I'm aiming to do here. And pretty much any kind of uh, realistic paint job, I have these little tricks that I do pretty much always that uh, just make things look a little bit more nicer. You know, taking the extra mile, I think it's called. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And of course, uh, if you want me to paint something specific, just let me know in the comment section and uh, I'll look into it and see what I can do. And subscribe, and of course, I always appreciate the likes. So, I guess I see you guys again in the next video.